Welcome to the Transnational Neuroscience Unit of the Donders Institute. The unit exists of uh, several holding rooms for animals. We have multiple behavioral units where we can test behavior. Um, and then we also have rooms where, for instance, surgeries can be done. Uh, we are doing uh, research here with animal models and investigating questions about uh, how the brain works and how we store memories. So for this particular room, this is a behavioral room where we have a maze built and uh, this maze, um, what we do is we take the animals here and a researcher will place the animal inside the maze. Uh, the animal will have to search for a food location in this maze and each time we will place the animal somewhere else as a starting point but the food will always be in the same point. So basically what we learn this animal is um, form a map of this maze and know where your food is and know how to get there from every single corner. Um, and you can uh, think of it as basically when you live in a city and you want to find your own restaurant. Um, how do you get to that restaurant? If you've lived in this city very long, that's very easy because you know the way. If you're going to be in a new city, it will take you much longer um, before you find it. And we can look at them uh, via the 12 cameras that are placed right above the maze. For the object recognition task, we have a big box with uh, two objects in there. Two the same objects, so two cups for instance, that are placed in, uh, in two corners and the animal will be placed in there and will explore these objects. The next time the rat will be placed into that box, one of the objects will have moved to a different corner and we will check how often the animal actually looks at that replaced object. And this is how we look at memory. I would like to explain it with an analogy. So, um, for instance, when you enter to your house or apartment, then you know that there is a sofa in the living room and you know the location of this sofa. And you know that there is a kitchen table in the kitchen. So you memorize these things and uh, you can recognize this, uh, the location of these objects in these, uh, in these uh, contexts or in these rooms. Uh, so this is a part of our episodic uh, uh, memory. It lets us to remember what happened, where and when. So the type of research that we do here, um, even though we work with animals, the ultimate goal would be to translate our uh, results um, towards humans. Um, and then you can think of using animals that are models for certain uh, human diseases like Alzheimer's um, or, or also just uh, basic. So how does the brain function in certain tasks uh, towards, uh, how does that then translate to humans? The type of research we do is uh, unfortunately not completely replaceable um, by not working with animals. First of all, we look at uh, complex behavior um, where you would need uh, the whole organism. Um, so you would not be able to replace it by just uh, um, a tissue or even a replica of a brain if we would be able to get that. Um, Next to that, uh, we use techniques that we would not be able to use on, on humans uh, for ethical reasons. This is the housing room of rats. Or we are making sure that they have uh, optimal uh, housing conditions in the facility so with controlled temperature and humidity. We provide the uh, uh, correct light intensity for the animals. The way that we can con contribute with this uh, research for society is that um, we look at the fundamental parts of, of um, how does the brain function and how can we translate what we find here um, in, uh, towards humans. But also we try to put the animals through a more uh, a human 
um, uh, setting like like this maze we would be able to to translate that the other way around could also be the case that you would design an experiment where you let your animals do a similar thing as a human and you can look at those results and see if there are similarities or differences in that Thank you.